So I know a lot of people out there making the joke as they present on camera if they're wearing pants because they're in their own house, but I think the real question that you should be asking yourself about me is, am I just wearing this shirt? Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here. We've been getting a lot of requests for tips, tricks, and advice on how to make better videos at home, given that we're all stuck in our houses right now. And we thought that was a great idea, so I really think it's important to, to put yourself into two categories. Are you pre-recording videos on a camera, you're gonna edit those videos afterwards and then send them out? Or do you think that you're finding yourself having to do live conferences, whether it may be you're teaching, you know, like I've had to teach my photo classes now online, or you know, maybe you've got a work conference, or maybe you just wanna talk to friends and family and you want to have better looking shots. How can we do that? Now our first tip is audio. You really need good audio because right now the camera's recording its internal microphones and it sounds terrible. Unless you're recording in a professional music recording studio, your house is going to have a lot of echo. You know, you're going to have other family members and pets running around and all that sound's going to get picked up. Now a lot of you out there have these small shotgun microphones, but putting these on camera is only going to be a marginal improvement. What you really want is a lav mic. I'm going to plug this in right now and get rid of this terrible audio. So doesn't that sound way better? I know what you're thinking, you know, a wireless microphone is too expensive, and they can be, but this is not a wireless. This is plugged in with an eight foot cable. You don't need wireless inside the house. These things are very affordable. I mean, you get them online for almost nothing. Uh, there's a Deity version now, which is about $50 US. I think everybody can grab that. So it sounds way better, and of course it gets rid of the echo, and we're not gonna hear other family members running around. So the other thing I wanna talk about is coverage. And this is where you basically record video that you can put over your talking points or cover your edits, your transitions between frames on your video. It just looks a lot more professional because we see two issues. First off, you know, someone's gonna be talking, but then they make a mistake or their train of thought ends and then they just jump cut to themselves in a different position talking about something else. And it looks very jarring. Uh, even if you're the greatest order on the planet though and you're able to one take your entire video without mistakes, it's still way more interesting for people to see video coverage and you know it just breaks up the whole scene and it makes it faster. Now Jordan and I did make a video on coverage back when you're we working for TCS TV so check out that link in the description below and next I just want to show you a short clip where we are using coverage with actually a very old camera just Nikon D750 nothing specifically made for video and you can see the results of that here. I'd like to introduce you to the Yashica Electro 35 GT. Now this is a true rangefinder with a proper rangefinder focusing system. Now one of the main standouts on this camera, seeing as how it came out in the mid 60s until the mid 70s, was its 45mm 1.7 lens, which was color corrected, a big deal as color film became more and more popular. Now this camera was designed to be easy to use, and in that regard you could not choose shutter speeds, it had a fully metered auto exposure system based on aperture priority only. And the Ashika Electro 35 had this adorable assist system. Now, if your shutter speed had to go very slow, down to 1 30th of a second or slower, this yellow slow indicator would light up, as well as it would also light up in the viewfinder. And if you had very bright conditions and the camera had to go above its 500th of a second fast shutter speed, it would then light up the over indicator with red. It was very easy to use, a beautiful looking rangefinder, and an adorable piece of camera history. So it's great if you've got a nice camera and nice equipment and you're ready to pre-record videos, edit them, polish them up and put them out on the net. But a lot of us are now finding ourselves in a position where we want to stay in touch with friends and family or we have to do video conference calls for work purposes or teach classes online, for example. Then you're forced to go through a webcam or your laptop's camera and that has its own challenges. They're not very good visually and they don't give you a lot of creative control. So let's talk about some tips that'll help you get better results when you're going through your computer. So first off, let's deal with the audio issue so you don't have to listen to this terrible audio for too long. Now, right now you're listening to me on the internal microphones of the laptop, and although some are better than others from brand to brand, you're still gonna get a lot of ambient noise in the room, a lot of echo from the room, and you know, let's say that we are doing a work call and I have to take notes or type something on the computer. Well, listen to this. Because those keys are so close to the microphone, it's abrasive, okay? This is all about human decency. And while we're on the topic of human decency, if you are forced to use the internal microphones, but you're conference calling with other people, other people are talking, that sound comes through your laptop speakers, and then you're either gonna get a feedback loop, which is just gonna be really horrible, or more likely your computer's gonna automatically then detect that and cut off your microphone. The problem is it sounds really annoying and really strange. So if you are talking to people, you do have to have an earbud in into the headphones 
headphone jack. That way, the internal microphone and internal speakers are not gonna have those problems with each other. But let's do a hard jump cut, sorry Jordan, and let's get back to a proper microphone. Okay, so now we're on a better microphone here, plugged straight into the computer, and now you can, I think, automatically hear that we're not getting that hollow echo noise. If I type here, you still hear it, but it's not as abrasive, and this does not have to be an expensive microphone, like just a basic USB microphone, or if you have a mic jack, just something that plugs straight into that. Even the microphone that might be on your headphones for your smartphone is gonna be much better than using the internal microphone. Next issue we have, every time that people use laptops to do these recordings, they always have them on a table or on their lap, and it's a low perspective looking up into the person. It's not very flattering for their face. You're seeing up my nose a lot. You can see my ceiling there. Probably not something you really need to look at. And this is a super easy fix. Just simply raise the laptop higher. I've got a box of instant ramen noodles here. Fantastic during this crisis, not only for eating, but also for getting your laptop higher. So there you go. Now you're looking at me straight on. We don't get that weird perspective. It's just, you know, you don't have that ceiling in the shot anymore. Super easy fix. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is lighting. It is very important where you position your computer. You certainly don't want any windows behind you. That's gonna make you a black silhouette. I do have light coming in the window. I guess right over here you can see it. And it's going on my face here, but it's creating quite a bit of contrast. There's a hot spot on my face here. This side of my face is quite dark. So. I'm just gonna use a very simple LED light. Again, doesn't have to be expensive. If you don't have something like this, try to find a place where you are gonna get more even light on both sides of your face. This is also important because laptop cameras and webcams aren't great in low light. And if they have to boost a very low exposure, you're gonna add a lot of noise and it's not gonna be very good quality. So I'm gonna turn this light on here. Just dial it up. And there we go, right? Much nicer, even light. The camera doesn't have to boost things as hard. Uh, it just evens out that hard contrast. So these are all some very quick, easy tips. Hopefully this will help you guys out. Thank you so much for joining us on this short video. And remember that this was because of viewers' suggestions. We love hearing your comments. If there's anything you'd like us to make a video on, anything you're wondering about, let us know. We read those and we try to accommodate them. Please check out our Instagram and our Twitter feeds as well. Subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. Go to deepreview.com. You can find tons of information there. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon.